Hey everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny olson Silek, and we've got a great show lined up for you this week. We're gonna take you to an archery event that's all about kids. But before we get to that, Jimmy's got another adventure in store for us. Well, that's right, Jenny. We're actually gonna kick off this week's show in Northern Michigan in Kalkaska County, chasing some brown trout through the ice. You won't wanna miss that. We also have time for a recipe on this week's show. And we do have a short show this week because our PBS stations are in pledge, but we are jam packed with a lot of good stuff. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor, the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's destination since 1988. Featuring varieties of homemade sausage, jerky, brats, and gourmet entrees. Holiday gift boxes can be assembled in-store or online. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Angler Quest Pontoons, a mid-Michigan company building boats for fishermen by fishermen. Angler Quest Pontoons are designed for comfort and functionality. On the web at anglerquestpontoons.com. That's a nice fish. By the Michigan Fly Fishing Club, presenting this year's 2019 Midwest Fly Fishing Expo. The expo is coming to Metro Detroit on March 9th and 10th at the Sports and Expo Center at Macomb Community College. For more information and details, midwestflyfishingexpo.com. Soaking in the rich tradition of Michigan hunting for over 30 years. Vanguard is proud to sponsor our friends at Michigan Out of Doors TV. found me driving through the latest winter storm to Bear Lake just outside of Kalkaska. Today Brian Darlin and Mitch Gazanik were just about the only ones on the ice today and were chasing brown trout through the ice. But before we could even talk strategy, we had to find out what was on the end of this tip up. Oh, it's a trout. Wow, pretty fish. Yeah. Wow. Very nice coloring on them. Not much like a uh, river running brown, but yeah. Very pretty indeed. Looks like he's over. He's over according to the stick, 12 and a half. Nice. Money. Our goal today was to catch some fish and talk about some of the new gear on the market for fishermen. Both are right up Brian's alley. The issue with a lot of the two dimensional sonars that are out there is that if you have multiple people using the same sonar, you have multiple baits sitting at the same line. And when they're sitting at the same line, it makes it hard to determine, okay, who's gonna get the bite? Who is it? You know, where, what's the fish doing? How's it acting? But with technology like this, it allows us to be able to say, okay, my bait is on the right-hand side of the screen. His bait is on the left-hand side of the screen. And this morning already, we had fish that were dodging between his bait and my bait. Oh, really? Back and forth. We were able to see the difference. It was pretty awesome, so. See if we can get one going. This new technology from Garmin, as you see, is pretty cool stuff. On the top left of the screen, you're looking at Mitch's bait and a fish looking at it. The bottom right is where Brian's bait is at. And when the fish gets close, it's best to pay attention. Got him. Oh, you... <laughs> Stealing the fish. Hey, <laughs> come right over from you right onto me. Right up close. Oh, he's swirling. There he is. Can you line him up? There he is. Look at that. Nice. All right. Stealing fish. <clears throat> I'm glad you primed him right up for yeah, me. Yeah, got him ready. <laughs> Came up, he, he wanted that little spoon. That's a good fish. 
Yeah. Very pretty. Look at that color on this. Yeah. Back. Very, very pretty. Gorgeous fish. Hmm. What a ton of fun, too. No brown trout. Yep. What Man. a ton of fun. They look so different than the river ones. Don't know? they? That is so cool. Well, nice job, young fella. Very good. Very good. <laughs> So he hit your rod first, didn't he? Hit mine twice, <laughs> and then he went over to his and didn't want to stick around and play. Jeez. Well, it's nice of you to share. We'll try again. <laughs> we'll try again. Mitch has fished this lake quite a bit, on soft and hard water. So when you get to fish with someone who knows the lake, always good to listen to where they like to set up. I look for the bottom where the drop-offs level out, because that's where at least I feel a lot of the fish are going to be huddled up kind of looking up the hill for any kind of bait or any food to fall down it and we just kind of go there fish all the water columns find out where they're sitting and go from there okay and pull them up through the hole nice that's the goal when talking about new technology there are two camps some folks don't want any fish finders at all no new gear just the old school stuff and that is fun as well but if you're in the other camp and like to see what's new for anglers this new technology is pretty amazing to say the least a long way back when, one of the more popular things was the old Humminbird units, and they had a pair of 6-volt batteries into them, and they were fantastic at the time. They showed a bottom, and they would show a little fish symbol onto them, and things progressed from there. Then all of a sudden, this advent of a side imaging technology came out, and people lost their minds because they had the ability to go along the edge of a lake and scan such a wide, vast area, you know, 100 feet to a side up at times, and really be able to see trees and structure and all that kind of stuff. Well, new technology come out. That has all increased and advanced. The uh, kilohertz of frequencies on these things gave us crisper, clearer images. The advent of more crystals inside of transducers gave us more information like that. Chirp technology come out and made our traditional two-dimensional sonar even clearer yet. So chirp come out, all the brands and all the manufacturers jumped on board with that. Had great luck with it. Now we're into panoptics. And with Garmin coming out with this panoptics thing first, it's... It's really going to be a game changer, you know, having the ability to be able to, for one, like right now we're ice fishing, and we have a cone angled down. We're able to see baits clear from one side of the shanty to the other. The shanty we're in now is a clam escape ice, so if you know that shanty, you'll know that it is about 10 feet by 10 feet. It's a great big shanty. I think it's actually 9 feet, but ish, close enough. It's a great big Taj Mahal is what Jimmy called it. <laughs> um, so, But it gives us the ability to be able to share one sonar between Mitch and myself and have three rods down covering a very wide span. See, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Here he co it was right at my bait. Oh, I missed him. <laughs> oh, I missed him. Oh, he had it. <laughs> Boy, he come up like a rocket. And then the, in the summertime, we'll be able to take that same transducer. He can put it onto a trolling motor, be able to ca have it cast off to one side, cast a lure over there, see a fish, watch your bait fall towards a fish, say 60 feet away from this thing. So it really is going to be the next step of awesome electronics technology. Whoa! Whoa! Come on! <laughs> How fun! Let's see if we can clear that transducer. I'm gonna pull all that oh, out. Oh, so I got a bunch of rod. line here. Light up my other rod. Oh, oh nice there you go. I'm tangled up with my other <laughs> rod, too. <laughs> oh, man, he's nice. Yeah, he he's a little taller, top to bottom, I think. He seems to be a little thicker. Yeah, I would say. If we just knew somebody that worked in the fishing industry that could well, help us out with this line problem. You know, even that guy might be able to come up with some new fishing line. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the only solution coming up here is some new fishing lines. That is a pretty twisted up mess. Look at that. Hooked right where he's supposed to be, too. Right on the end. Small little treble hook with a minnow. When the school swam by us, well, we were doing pretty good, to say the least. I think I got him. Nice. Another one on the dead stick. <laughs> Boy, they're just fighters. And see if we can double up. There's a bunch of fish down there. Yeah, there is. Oh, I think he got rid of my other line again. No, he's in the transducer. Yeah, it feels like it. Oh. We tangled up in the same fish, maybe? Did he get all three lines? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think he might have. I'm, I'm going slack. No, I just saw him. There he is. Grab him out. I got this rod too that's all tangled up. <laughs> Boy, they cover a ton of water when you're fighting them. Yeah, they do. Okay. You kind of went down to that smaller treble, didn't you? I did, I did on that one, actually. I uh, I nabbed that one off the bottom of a uh, of a jigging wrap that I had because I, I didn't bring any 14 trebles with me. I should have. But, yeah, it's a, that's the size on the bottom of a number two jigging wrap. So nab that off the bottom. We've got a little split shot onto it and drop that thing down in the zone and hmm. they come on up and made their way. There's another fish down in the bottom. I just saw it come through the graph and we don't have a line in place. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty fish. When used correctly, having a good view of what is going on below you just makes your time on the ice that much more successful. Towards mine. Oh yeah, he's going for it. That's a good fish. Dang, he's taking line. Yeah, he is. That's a good one. That's a real good one. There he is. There he is. Oh, yeah, buddy. that's one of the day. That is a good one. Beauty. Nice job. Dang. We had a great day on the water with a couple limits of trout to show for it. So whether you're on a bucket with no technology or in a high-tech portable shack, just get out and enjoy what we have here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Hi, I'm Jordan Brown, and for our next segment on this week's show, I was near the town of Grand Ledge to cover an archery tournament designed to get more kids into the outdoors. This is the very first 3D event that we've run. And the, the reason for that is, is that the Nationals in Kentucky, re, the 3D IBO down there now requires you to have a state qualifying 3D score. So we decided, hey, why don't we run a 3D event? And then we kind of ran with it and said, let's make it the Camel Classic and really push for kids to get outdoors. That's the push with NASP archery anyway. But with the 3D archery, we want to get them thinking about hunting, thinking about getting outside. The way that our 3D IBO archery event works is that the kids will come in and they will shoot at the first animal and they'll rotate around to six different animals from a ram at 15 meters to a turkey at 10 meters and the other animals are about a meter closer or farther away to each one of them. It teaches them to shoot more instinctively. So we're trying to encourage them to maybe think about some bow hunting and other things and also just for the more outdoor sports. Archery has become a huge sport growing in the state of Michigan. We in Grand Ledge have had so much amazing support from our community, from sponsors that are up on our curtains to the parents making baked goods and volunteering all of their time. All of our coaches are unpaid volunteers, but they just care about the kids. Um, with NASP Archery, it's fourth grade through 12th grade, and they can compete at the local level or they don't have to compete. Sometimes it just builds confidence for them and they can go as far as going to the Nationals or the National Championship after that. I found out about this event from one of the shooters on hand today. She was not only competing, but was also in charge of publicity for the event, doing her part to get more kids involved in archery. I'm McKenna and I've been in archery since fourth or fifth grade, so maybe four or five years. and. My dad used to be one of the coaches here, and he passed away back in January. So I basically um, have been helping out the team by volunteering, and I work with, well, media relations, and I just get people to come it, so people know more about archery. Anybody can do it, and it's so much fun. Plus, it, you, you, you can do real life stuff with it. You can go hunting with your friends, and it's just, it's really involved, and you get to meet so many people, like across the country. One of the great things about archery is that it doesn't exclude anyone and it allows kids to compete both individually and also be a part of a team sport. With NASP archery primarily, there is not a kid we've run across that cannot do archery. We have had kids that only have the use of one arm um, and we've taught them to shoot with their teeth. There are other kids with 
uh, other disabilities, from mental disabilities to physical disabilities, that have shot and have gone to the nationals before. We have had several kids that have earned their varsity letter in archery at our school that have been severely physically disabled. With the 3D event, as well as with regular NAS Bullseye Archery, it is one of the most phenomenal tools to get kids excited about something other than uh, video games and social media. They love getting out there. With NASP archery, they're, they're gonna be super successful within the first half hour of picking up a bow. And they're gonna hopefully take that along for the rest of their lives. It's great to see archery in so many schools around Michigan, and hopefully the sport will continue to grow. Special thanks to McKenna and Kelly for inviting me out and doing their part to get more kids involved in archery. Well, hey everybody, we are here at Antlers Fireside Grill, Canadian Legs. We're here with Jim Wood, chef extraordinaire. We're here at our second annual Wild Game Dinner. Can we get a little applause out there for everybody? Hey! And so we're just thankful everybody could be here. It's a lot of fun. Jim, what are you, I think I know what you're cooking here. What are we doing here tonight? Well, you challenged me with the woodcock thing once already. Yes. And I think I got it right. Normally I fail once out of twice, so hopefully it doesn't suck. But <laughs> So this is not the same woodcock recipe we did nope. last fall. It's different. Same elements, basically. You're kind of rolling the dice with woodcock a little bit. Yeah, I've literally never cooked this before, so let's... <laughs> it is amazing how many times that happened. Well, how are we going to get started here? So these are, uh, I don't, can't remember how many you have here, but probably, what, 15 to 20 woodcock, and yep. you get a little medallion on each side. Yep. And what are we, they got them in what right now? Just flour. Just flour. Okay, and how do we get started here? So we're just gonna put a little salt on these. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna hopefully try to get most of them in the pan at the same time anyway. So is there a challenge with cooking? I mean, woodcock is kind of like, almost like cooking liver a little bit, but what, what's the challenge when you're doing something like yeah, this? Yeah, so you just don't wanna overcook it. Okay. And I know I make it sound a lot simpler than it is, but um, you know, mid-rare to medium is about as far as you wanna go with it, if you can take it. Um, okay. Just because, yeah, it starts to taste livery, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, mm -hmm. but it also toughens up a little bit. These little birds fly pretty hard, so they don't have a whole lot of intramuscular fat. Okay. So you're dealing with some moisture issues there. So the quicker you can cook them, the better. So we're gonna have some blueberry, is that just blueberry? Yeah, that's a Michigan blueberry preserve, actually. Out of a can, or did you? I'm gonna tell you that it was my late grandmother's <laughs> recipe, but. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it wasn't. Okay. Uh, no. Old Grandma Smucker, she was... That's pretty good. Well, you know, I've been working on it for like a week now. So. A year now. Yeah. All right, so we've got our color on there. And then how do you know once you get the sauce going, when you put those back in, is it just an eyeball thing, or do you kind of like five minutes, ten minutes? What do you usually try to keep it in there for to finish them off? Uh, you're basically looking, they're already starting to bleed a little bit. Okay. So once they start to bleed, as they would say, uh, they're... So they're still pretty rare then, they're right? They're about now? halfway cooked. Halfway, okay. And then we're actually going to pour a little bit of the fat on them, just to help keep them moist while we do this. Okay. All right. And we go into the pan with our bacon. And we're just looking to crisp it up. We pre-cook this. Okay. Now watch out, Jimmy. I know you don't have a whole lot of hair left. Mm -hmm. All right. So then we're going to add the gravy back in there. All right, Jimmy, if you want to add the blueberries in there, just because you're not doing a whole lot. That's right. <laughs> All of it? Sure. Oh, all right, yeah. Good? That's good. Wow. Basically, by the time the sauce is thickened up, if you do it correctly, the woodcock will be cooked through, so. And so, Jim, what is the name of this recipe? This seared woodcock with a Grand Marnier and Michigan blueberry sauce. All right. Thank you.
Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. If you're looking for something fun to do this month, you might want to check out the Southeast Michigan Bowhunters chapter of Safari Club. They're having their annual fundraiser banquet. It's Saturday, March 23rd in Livonia. Lots of great food, outfitters, exhibitors, lots of fun happening there. If you'd like more information, you can check out our Facebook page. We've got all the details there. In the meantime, if you'd like to know where we are or where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a great way to kind of keep tabs on us. We're at michiganoutofdoorstv.com. Full episodes of the show there. Lots of good stuff coming over the next few weeks. If we don't see it in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see it right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by, by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or greenstonefcs.com. By Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises of Munising, exploring Lake Superior's Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. With its sandstone cliffs, caves, waterfalls, and lighthouses, Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises on the web at picturedrocks.com. By Showspan, producing consumer shows that include the ultimate sports show in Grand Rapids. Over 350 exhibitors, outdoor gear, boats, seminars, Lake Ultimate, and Big Buck Night. The ultimate sports show at the DeVos Place in Grand Rapids. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land I am.